The Annie Altman Show podcast and other projects are field me search for the Hume Annie. Hey, it's Annie. Please check out and share the website, Patreon, and Etsy to help support these projects and my self-project. The Humani is a one-woman show about how no one ever fully figures out how to be a human being, how there's themes of the human being experience organized into 10 C words connected by the theme of connection, and how discussing these themes we all experience somehow is my best idea to contribute to minimizing unnecessary human suffering through maximizing resource equity. That was a lot of words. Maybe note when you hear the words connection, consciousness, choice, change, compassion, communication, community, creation, charge, curiosity, and or courage in this episode. That's also a lot of words. Here's some more. Of self-expression. And also I feel very, I I feel very passionate about sharing my story as a loss survivor because I feel sometimes that that part of the equation is never really you know, they tell, they tell stories of suicide, but they don't really tell the story of the survivor. And so that's why I really feel strongly about telling my story and reaching out and, and sharing it because I think talking is important. Yes. Yeah. How else are we going to know what's going on in someone else's consciousness without them sharing it? Exactly. Exactly. And that's what we have to share is who we are. And that, and it's unusual. It's, it's different because we're all different and how we look at things is different. And so even though maybe you may not see things in the same way, but sometimes if you do hear somebody else, I firmly believe that people have something to say that we might need to hear. You could have all the money in the world, but if you're not happy, you're not happy. Right. But people never forget how you make them feel. I love that quote. And, and I'll prove that right. When I was a child. I used to go to my grandma's house, which is like a, a block up the street, and my my grandma would let me stay at her, her, her house on a Saturday night. And she would let me have two to three extra bowls of ice cream. You know, the Neapolitan, the three <laughs> Spumoni type ice cream? Grandchildren can do no wrong, the, my it, grandma says. You, I agree with that one. And, like, I go for ice cream, like now, down on Larchmont or somewhere, and it takes me back to that moment. You know, that feeling of just sitting in front of a warm fire while, while it's snowing outside, watching TV and watching the ice cream melt and eat it and then go back for more. I knew that I was isolating and that I, and that I was just depressed, you know, and really not being... And, and I knew why. I knew why I was choosing this path to cope, but I couldn't stop myself. Um, and I knew, I, I knew why those neuronal pathways were burned so deeply. It's because that's how I coped as a child. Um, that's what I did. That's where, I, that's where, you know, comfort lied was going to sleep. And there was no, there was no work had to be done. If you were sleeping, nobody was bothering you. If you were sleeping, um, my family, like big, big time nappers got into trauma therapy and just like the the talk about like what is your belief system what do you what do you believe you know i believe that i'm a piece of shit okay when's the first time you felt this way okay when's the most intense time you felt felt this way when's the last time you felt this way and then like my therapist walks me through that process we do emdr bilateral stimulation and also i joke that my uh nickname in high school was negativity but it really was true Oof. <laughs> Right? It's like one of those things that really sucks to hear, but it also kind of like shakes, it can shake you out of yourself and go, wow, is this the person I want to be? Is this what I want to, is this how I want to be living? And it's great, great too, great joke. Right. It's also like, you know, I can laugh at myself now because that was like 20 years ago, but um, it was, it was painful at the time. But the reason it was painful is because it was, there was something true about it. That like things don't like if somebody comes up to me and says, you have green skin, I'm not going to be hurt by that because I just know it's not true. But the, the, the negativity thing hooked me because I was like, they're not wrong. So it started with, I have got to take myself less seriously, or I'm going to give myself a coronary. Like it was a little bit. There's no intentionality around groupthink. Groupthink is like, Oh, well, everybody else said it, so I'm going to say it too. And now, like, boom, we're all operating at, like, lowest common denominator. Whereas group mind 
is an experience of, of stepping in with love, with trust, with playfulness, and with intention so that we can access something uh, that, is, that is naturally going to be beneficial, which makes it easier to trust it. Um, you know, and I've, I've had a number of experiences of being in improv classes where like, uh, the group mind takes over, everybody feels it. And a couple people freak out They're like, Whoa, oh, okay. Oh, that was weird. That was weird. Oh my, I didn't know I was going to say that. Oh, that was so weird. Oh, we could, anything could happen right now. And it's like, yeah, well, anything can happen. And what's going to happen is all good because that's our intention. We've already set our intentions. Now we're just going to ride them into glory. Mm. Yeah. which I think is very challenging mission your overall why would you like to think what is your why it's it's not what you're supposed to be doing if it doesn't align I think that's the biggest lesson I've been teaching myself is that everything is connected and that it can be connected it doesn't have to be separate you don't have to have separate outlets for what you're doing you can have it all work in some way and it's going to be fine because there are people out there who are going to align with that and they're going to be like this is what I've been looking forward to doing because this, this makes sense this is something that not a lot of people are doing nowadays. People are just having separate lives, like their work life and then their personal life or they're having their project life and their like freelance life separate from like their job. And it's like, why not have them all connect? Why not have that whole sense of happiness in everything? Why does it have to be sad in some places and and happy in others which is fine because that is life you know it can't all be happy all the time but why not have something that makes you feel fulfilled and, and conscious in everything that you're doing people they say that pain is the touchstone of growth of all growth you know i i believe that that's true like you know these things force us you know to look at things you know we don't i wouldn't want to look at these things if i wasn't forced to you know illness forces you to look at I mean we were having this conversation earlier that like healing healing brings up everything unlike itself and that truly to heal from one thing asks you to look at all of the other things right so to heal wholly right um and so yeah, you know, Lyme uh, and the other co-infections for me have been, you know, teachers. A way to integrate the, the point we're talking about, which is when you're telling those stories about who I am based on past experience, it's not leaving space for who you are in this moment. You're like bringing that past construct, that past story and replaying that Um but if you become aware of those past programs, you come to a transition point. Every story has transitions. Every story has points where things change. So you move from the story of I am this past story to I am changing that past story. And then eventually as time progresses, that story of like the change transition point will fall away to I am this new thing that I've always wanted to be. Like I am my fullest expression. And then in that, the past even begins to fall away. Like I am this and I have, al have always been this. It's not like negating the past. It's just not telling that story. It's not giving power to it anymore. The best fit for them. I might say, you know, hey, I noticed this isn't really, you know, working for you. Um, I see some, you know, maybe alternatives that would be better. And so it's not something that at the get go I can say, this is exactly what it's going to be like because part of my job is listening to what that person needs and kind of making it more organized because they might throw a bunch of stuff at me and not really understand or know what they're trying to find and it's part of my job to arrange that in a way that is approachable and to basically if you think of like a tangled mess of yarn that I'm unraveling the yarn and creating it into these neat little balls. But in order to do that, they have to share the messy tangled yarn with me first. And I don't see that until we start working together. Put astrology into that box. Cause they're kind of like, okay, well believe us. Like it is real. It's a science. It's a, it's a pseudoscience or whatever. We're like, we don't have to convince it of that. We can just use it as astrology as a language and a system of understanding and of 
of people. That's it. It's yeah, fine. And it can like, it can be that. Because like also what's and what's really cool is because like astrology is nuanced. Like astrology is these to me the combination of all these other sciences and arts. Like it's a combination of things. And once we start to really be able to appreciate that it's not just one thing it's a combination of thing that uses the sciences and like works right. very well with the sciences like it, i don't i don't know i don't think that astrology needs to be a science like it can use the science it can use the structure like it it's such a frivolous like conversation because we already know that it, it works for people hey thanks for sticking around till the end please check out the Annie Altman show.com and also patreon.com slash the Annie Altman show. If you're able and interested in donating a dollar or more per month to these projects, non-dollar ways to share value includes, and is not limited to sharing anything, the podcast, any YouTube video, any blog post, any social media account, subscribing, following anywhere, rating or reviewing anything, sending any feedback or ideas, and or connecting me with people for the podcast or other projects you feel would enjoy this work. In my opinion, word of mouth is the only quote real advertising, so here I am using words from my mouth.